And we are live. And here and we are. It's another Midas Letter. Here we are again today. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, sitting in for the Sir James as he is uh, in Miami. We'll be, we were able to uh, talk to him earlier today. We'll go to that in a moment. But uh, yeah, it's been an interesting day. Yeah, we got a real rally going in. Uh, anybody hear of, hear of a stock called Afria? Which one? <laughs> Afria's up uh, the 30%. Yeah, right now it, it was is, down too. So if it's up thirty percent, it's from the low. It's up even more. It is, and that new report actually. So just to let everyone know, uh, we know that the uh, the second Hindenburg uh, report came out. Uh, it's focusing on Liberty Health Sciences this time. Right. We will be talking that at uh, almost four p.m. sharp. We'll be having Ben Smith uh, come on via yeah. Skype. He's been uh, dissecting that, so he's going to look through that and let us know uh, what that's going to. You know what's in that report, and um, yeah, the, and, and, and you, now were you just watching on on uh, was it BNN the president of uh, Seoul Global, which used to be Scythian, right? Uh, he was on there with Amanda Lang. Uh, okay, always look at both sides of the story. He was trying absolutely to defend right. Himself there. Uh, you know, there, there's two sides to every story, right? Yeah, there's a bid and an ask. Absolutely. So you you should watch both of those. Yeah, but but uh, what we'll focus on. Today's show, we're starting off with the news. It's going to be just a couple of minutes from now. We've got the segment we did with uh, James just a, a little short while ago. So James West will be on. And he's from he's in Miami. He's in Miami. Uh, John Fowler, president of the Supreme Cannabis Company, yeah. he's going to be here live in studio. We yeah, they, talk that, to him. One of the first one of the first ones to, to really take off. I thought. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he was the third cannabis stock I ever owned. Uh, Supreme was uh, Benjamin Smith. He's going to be coming on at uh, just before four o'clock, as yep. I said before. Yep. We'll go over yep. the market yep. close. Today's charts with uh, Sir Ed himself. Yeah, thank you. And then uh, post legalization. We're talking about that as well. Yeah. So uh, we've got a really packed show this this afternoon, almost this evening, almost jumped the gun. But I'm looking forward to uh, to actually a lot of those, but especially uh, speaking with John Fowler. I've always really appreciated uh, him in the business. And Ben, I really want to go over that report, see what he had to do. Uh, dissect out of it. Yeah, as many of our viewers are probably doing right now, trying to figure well, out what's going it, on. It, it, it was, you know, it was one of the uh, one of the the fellows we talked to yesterday. I guess it was uh, uh, Brockstein from from Houston. Yep. He 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 said, you know, you always talked about Afria in, in the same same light of uh, weed weed, uh, which is canopy growth and Aurora. Those three were the were the big three, right? It's supposed to be the premier, yeah. And, and so. Yeah, so you know what? Let, let's. I, I I like it that that the markets rallied sharply today because it, it's depressing to see something just that that was such a big like in five billion market cap down to a billion two. A lot of that's a lot of pain uh, just before Christmas. Yep, it absolutely is, um, and it, it has been very interesting. I did not expect this today. Uh, even the mining sector. If you look at a lot of the, uh, some of the mining plays that are in my uh, por my portfolio, or just the ones that I, I track, a few of those have really gone a little bit of a rip here as well. Which is funny because yeah. let's see if it's still the case. The Dow, S and P 500, and Nasdaq still haven't had the greatest days. So we're seeing a huge divergence. I got the right S and I got the S and P uh, chart up here, and before we get to the news, I just want to show this because it, it like look at that last candle. That that's a uh, that's Thor's hammer right there. There you go. There you go. That's major, Thor's major hammer. tail, and green. Even though it's down, yeah, it's it's higher than where it opened, mm -hmm. and it went lower. And and right right to these lows, what I what I really like to see is a, as, as kind of, this kind of this kind of test, where you know this this has been tested again, and 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 jumping off of that, right? Mm -hmm. So so you know what that this to me looks like a sort of a tradable bottom, something that, that's gonna uh, cause, you know, we're gonna have some up days. That's what I think. Yeah, so we'll, when, we're going, when we're going through our charting, we'll yeah. come back to yeah, that we'll, and we'll yeah, go we'll, over that because we'll I wanna, wanna look at the Dow. Looks, see how it looks when it closes. Absolutely. But what we need to do first is we went through all today's news and what's going on there. We had Ricky uh, go through the news and uh, have a little piece for us. So why don't we turn to that right now and figure out what happened today. Ricky, don't lose that number. Thanks, and here's what's making news today. Afria Inc. announced its board of directors has appointed a special committee of independent directors to review the company's previously completed acquisition of Latum Holdings Inc. 
The company's board reiterated its confidence in the process leading to the acquisition, as well as in its Latin American operations and strategy. It says it is undertaking a comprehensive review led by a special committee of independent directors of all the allegations in the interests of protecting Afria shareholders. Acreage Holdings Inc. and Form Factory Inc., a multi-state manufacturer and distributor of cannabis-based edibles and beverages, announced they have signed a definitive agreement for Acreage to acquire Form Factory in an all-stock transaction valued at 160 million US dollars. Acreage will issue approximately 6.4 million subordinate voting shares to Form Factory shareholders at a deemed price of 25 US dollars per share. Canopy Growth Corporation has finalized an all-cash transaction to acquire Stores and Bickle, GMBH and Company, KG, related entities and IP for a purchase price of up to approximately 145 million euros. Based in Tutlingen, Germany, Stores and Bickle are designers and manufacturers of medically approved vaporizers, most notably the Volcano Medic and the Mighty Medic. Stores & Bickle has spent the last two decades developing an automated and internationally certified factory, achieving ISO 13485 certification in 2009. The company has exported devices to 50 markets around the world. FSD Pharma Inc., which, through its wholly owned subsidiary FV Pharma Inc., is a licensed producer of cannabis, announced today that it has entered into a definitive collaboration and license agreement with World Class Extractions Inc., a company that has developed a unique extraction process designed to produce quality, potent cannabis extracts. World Class is also in the process of completing its own previously announced reverse takeover of CBD Med Research Corp and submitted its initial listing application to the Canadian Securities Exchange late last week. Under the terms of the agreement and a related lease, FSD Pharma will provide World Class with space at its 620,000 square foot facility in Coburg, Ontario, assisting it in obtaining an extraction license from Health Canada and provide World Class with the raw cannabis needed to produce cannabis extracts. In return, World Class will provide FSD Pharma with certain royalty rights over the profits derived from the sale of those cannabis extracts. MedMen Enterprises Inc. announced the hiring of Michael W. Kramer as their new chief financial officer. Kramer is a veteran finance executive with retailers such as Apple Inc. and Forever 21. He served as financial officer of Apple Retail, where he developed brick and mortar retail strategies. And he oversaw 12 quarters of increased year-over-year -year earnings for Abercrombie & Fitch. Tilt Holdings Inc., a vertically integrated infrastructure and technology platform serving the cannabis industry, announced it has acquired two leading cannabis companies to expand its capabilities in the cultivation and logistics spaces. Tilt has acquired Blackbird Holdings Corp., a distribution company providing logistics operations and software solutions for each touchpoint in the cannabis supply chain. Tilt is also releasing more details about the recently announced acquisition of Standard Farms, which is a multi-state medical cannabis operator focused on greenhouse cultivation and CO2 extraction. Standard Farms is in over 95% of Pennsylvania's dispensaries and has shipped over 200,000 units of product. And today, Tilt officially began trading on the Canadian Securities Exchange under the ticker symbol Tilt. The Supreme Cannabis Company and Khalifa Kush Enterprises Canada ULC, an affiliate of Khalifa Kush Enterprises, have entered into an exclusive consulting services agreement to develop and launch a lineup of premium cannabis products. KKE will provide cannabis-related consulting services to Supreme Cannabis, who will be the exclusive producer of KKE-branded products in Canada and, subject to certain approvals, international markets other than the United States. This will include a strain to be developed by the parties in Canada based on KKE's flagship Khalifa Kush strain. Supreme Cannabis and KKE will work to develop and commercialize a product lineup that is expected to include pre-rolls, extracts, capsules and cannabis oils to be sold by Supreme Cannabis under the KKE brand. And Supreme Cannabis founder and president John Fowler will be a guest on Midas Letter Live today.
Tilray Inc. announced that it partnered with researchers at the Lambert Initiative for Cannabinoid Therapeutics at the University of Sydney to complete a study examining the effects of cannabis on driving and cognitive function. The effects of medicinal cannabinoids on driving study was a double-blind, placebo-controlled study that compared the effects of two varieties of cannabis, a variety containing high levels of THC and a variety containing a one-to-one -one balanced ratio of THC to CBD, compared to a placebo which contained neither THC nor CBD. The trial phase of this study was completed in 2018 and the published results are expected in 2019. And that's your news for today. And thank you, Ricky, for the news. A bunch of different things there. One, specifically, we mentioned that Supreme Cannabis and uh, Wiz Khalifa, they had that deal together. We've got John Fowler coming up at 3.30, just a reminder. But first, I uh, touched base with James earlier today. Let's see what he was doing over in, uh, over in Miami. Miami. And we are joined all the way from Miami, the man himself, James West. How's it going? <laughs> Good, Brandon. How are you doing out there? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You know, I, I'm looking at the markets and it's uh, a much different day than it has been the last two days, or at least uh, specifically speaking to cannabis. I think the, the markets in general are still trying to figure out what they want to do, but uh, no, everything is well. Yeah, well, interestingly enough, I'm seeing that the Midas Letter Large Cap Index is up 11.3% at this time, largely driven by the reversal in Afria shares. It looks like Afria has gained the upper hand in its battle with the bears over there at Hindenburg Research, which does seem to be going up in flames right now, and uh, QMC Capital. Uh, but it looks, uh, looks like since they put out that pr press release where they committed to the idea that they're going to conduct a, a review of their governance processes over the uh, acquisition of the Latin American asset seems to have, seems to have touched a, uh, a nerve on the, in the market to the upside because, wow, Afria is just like on fire, up 25% right now uh, on 22.5 million shares traded, and that is nothing but good news. Mind you, the whole market is up. Uh, canopy growth is up 7.14%, back over $40. Aurora's uh, up 11.7% to $6.94. I saw it was at $7 a little earlier. And uh, Kronos Group is at 7% right now, trading at $13.85 a share, which is, uh, you know, that's all good news. Yeah, it is. I mean, you can keep going down the list. I mean, uh, Harvest, uh, Harvest One is up 12%. Uh, Believe is up 12%. You've got uh, Indiva up 15%. Um, James E. Wagner, we had him on the show yesterday. Uh, they're up 13.5%. So, you know, it really makes you wonder. I mean, obviously, there's a huge short campaign. And if you're a shorter out there, you're going to say, you know what? I don't care this is, that we're just talking about Afria here. I think the whole sentiment's going to turn. The markets are terrible. We're attacking them all. And if you tack all the larger ones, the, and then you can start tacking the smaller ones, it's almost like obviously everything's come together. But now that Afria's done this little bit of a, I don't know, I, I guess you can call it reversal, the rest of the, uh, the field is following suit. I wonder if that's just uh, a lot of its shorts covering. Yeah, well, that would be hard to say. Uh, you know, certainly there's been a lot of uh, long players who have been waiting for the reversal expecting that Afria has been oversold, especially as we've seen some of the supporters of Afria come out in support of the company and start to debunk some of the research that was uh, used in the Hindenburg uh, piece. And uh, increasingly, you know, if you, you were to just measure the tone of the this the impetus has shifted in favor of Afria and uh, the stock price is certainly moving in the right direction. Now, this is interesting to me because it's sort of happening against the backdrop of general market weakness in the broader markets. The Dow Jones is still off 1.89%. Uh, the S&P is down. The, all the markets in Europe were down. And so I wonder how much of this uh, rally in the cannabis sector is just more of a dead cat bounce as opposed to a meaningful reversal because certainly the trend in the last couple of weeks, or more or less since September, is that the larger cannabis stocks have been trading in lockstep with the broader market indices. So while we're seeing this 
pretty big alley. How sticky that's going to be, especially considering the sort of uh, recovery in relations between the United States and China as a result of the G20 meeting in Argentina has now reversed again. Since we put handcuffs on the uh, the daughter of the founder of Hua Huai, Hua Huai, Hua Huai, Hua Corporation, and uh, you know that's that's got the potential to throw the whole uncertainty in the global broader marketplace back on its head. So you know it's again the volatility in the cannabis space has been so wild lately that even this rally today, you know we're only halfway through the day or just past halfway through the day. I wouldn't be surprised if it went the other way yet again. So, you know, if you looked at Apria, had lost major ground this morning, was trading below 460 a share for a while there. It looked like Afria was losing out to the bears. And now, boom, the cat- it catalyzes this reversal. I think that's, that's stunning. And uh, really, the market is just just crazy. I mean, you could be up now if you bought Afria at the low. But I don't know if I'm going to be too much of a better on that that trend sticking and the chances of a reversal to me at this point are at least 50 50. Yeah and you said the word and uh, Greg who's on the show with us a lot loves this word a lot and you used it uh, the dead cat bounce and it's funny because that's what it feels like I mean if you look at the Dow currently is down almost two percent the S&P 500 is still down 1.78 percent you've got the Nasdaq still down uh, one percent so You've got, like you said, the broader markets are still really in, in, a, in, in a down market. Uh, the, I think it's Huawei. Huawei, but I could be wrong as well. Uh, that is actually quite serious to have that happen. And we are yet to going to find out what the repercussions of that are. I can imagine that was very purposeful. Uh, so, it, you know, it, it's hard. But like you said, if you, a free is up 20% right now. But it was down 15, 20% yesterday. If you had bought in the lows, you're up 40% plus. Like that's, this is a trader's dream right now. Is are these markets, especially the, the cannabis space? But is this like an actual reversal? Like, hey guys, we found our bottom. I'm not convinced. Not yet, at least. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Well, so uh, what other uh, what other big headlines are out there moving stocks? What other stocks are putting on lots of value today that you're seeing? You know what? I've been really, really focused on cannabis today because I've been watching how these have been rebounding and, and what has been happening with them because I'm so fascinated by the fact that they just completely had 20, 30, 40% ripped off of almost half of them. So I've been very, very uh, down the tunnel focused today. But... Looking at the broader markets, uh, I guess that's somewhat what I'm looking at at the same time. Those haven't been recovering, so I'm a little worried because we saw the, the Huawei arrest yesterday, and that's where we was like, okay, we're going to have another terrible day today. And I looked at my portfolio and thought, okay, this looks a lot better than uh, Monday and Tuesday did. So uh, I've been very narrow focused for today. Yeah, well, I guess... Uh the, the order of the day is Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, because the reversals are, are coming in so hot and fast and so meaningfully. Like, look at even MedMen. MedMen is up 62% or 18% right now to $4.02. <laughs> but that's really nothing compared to the, the value that it's lost since the end of October. I mean, and they had sort of their own micro-catalyst uh, whereby they had to cut their bot deal in half after their CFO unexpectedly quit. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to me that these, you know, the, the companies that are recovering out of the, out of left field, like you would think that in this, in this, in this atmosphere of recovery, you would have expected Kronos group to put on a lot more. It's almost like the whole, the whole rumor surrounding Altria's, uh, discussions with them has been discounted again. It's back to 1374. You know, it's uh, it's just it's just a crazy market. I mean, I just sit here on the sidelines kind of right now because I don't have the ability to sit and monitor the market, which is what I'd want to be doing if I was actually actively trading it. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking to build positions here at, on the some of the lower price uh, stocks when when you get a good sense that the reversal is is now going to remain meaningful. Don't forget, we're still in tax law selling season here till at least the 15th of December. And uh, so I'm going to hold off on any real piling back in 
or any conviction that there has been a meaningful reversal. And, and let's hope we see some resolution to this. A Freya story, you know, we've got that big bridge mark debacle out there, still a black mark on the Canadian capital markets. Uh, you know, there's still a lot of there's still a lot of negativity in the sector. But I think starting in Q1 2019, we're going to see that just reverse and the market's going to come roaring back, I think, especially if we can get the broader markets to discount the uncertainty that has been injected into it. Thanks to uh, the, the guy in the White House here in uh, the United States. But, um, you know. There's a lot of there's a lot of reasons to be hopeful for Q1 2019 at this point. Yeah, and uh, speaking of, of bridge mark, actually, I'm going to be uh, dissecting um, a, a new development in that uh, for our show coming up at three o'clock uh, with with Ed because they have released uh, another document uh, going a little bit more into what that investigation is looking like, and I have not done, uh, dived through that yet, but we will be going into that because that's a, a very very interesting. Um, situation where this is going to affect a lot of different companies. I think it, it's also, uh, as you've mentioned numerous times, uh, the whole idea of a check swap and the whole idea of the way some of these companies have operated, the companies being the consultants and things like that for a long time. Well, now it's, you're in the limelight. You're in social media now. And you're, we've brought in a lot of investors who are new to investing, so they're not used to the, the way of things or anything like that. They see something. They start researching. They're not dumb people. They're just newer to investing. Well, they're starting to learn. And, and, and over the last year or so, especially with cannabis, uh, we've brought a lot of people into investing who had never invested outside of an ETF or something they got at their bank before. So now they're actually paying attention and they're saying, wait a second, I don't like that. I don't agree with that. And I think it's going to be a much bigger story than what it currently is now. I think this is just the very, very beginning of the BC Security Commission just basically saying, hey, look, we, we're suspending these things right now. We're looking into it. Uh, stay tuned. Well, let's stay tuned to what they've said now. That's not even the beginning of it. That's my, that's my belief. I think this is going to be much, much bigger. And I, I can't wait to uh, break that down at three. I hope there's lots in there. And I didn't just rally everybody up. And then all of a sudden, it was more of just like a fluffy news release. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but I'm excited to get into there. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. I, I'll be looking forward to watching that this afternoon myself. And, uh, you know, there's still lots of fallout to come from this Afria story. Certainly, if nothing, it, it should shines a pretty bright light on some of the uh, potential for self-dealing that has occurred at the board level at Afria that, uh, you know, that might not necessarily mean the company's worth nothing, but it certainly begs the question is to what level of corporate governance is being observed at the company level. And certainly the press release today where they've committed to a review of that process sort of underscores the fact that they acknowledge that. So lots, lots of interesting things. We are certainly living in interesting times. I'm going to I'm going to leave it there for now, Brandon. I'll look forward to talking to you again tomorrow. Absolutely. Although, if we can get a drum roll here, I was told that there's a certain day today of the days in the year that is special because apparently it's your birthday. <laughs> I was told this. and It wasn't your birthday yesterday or tomorrow. Yes. It's today. Yes. So happy birthday to yourself. I will promise you I will eat this and I will think of you while I'm eating this and I will tell you how it tasted. But uh, from everyone at the studio, happy birthday and enjoy your time in, uh, in Miami. Look forward to when you're coming back and we'll get back to the show. And we are back. We are back. Uh, just to go really quickly on that point, I was going to uh, bring up the bridge work aspect and talk about a little bit more today. Uh, that came out earlier. We had about an hour and a half to get ready for the show. So forgive me, I will not be bringing that up today because I have not read it and gone through it. Uh, why don't we talk about that tomorrow though? I, I will have plenty of time to do that by tomorrow. Sure. That's an interesting uh, story there. Very interesting. Yeah. But uh, The so shell we, game. The shell game. And you know what though, you know, I was talking to, uh, this has been something I've been talking about a lot with uh, different, oh, there's a question here actually. Stop, stop the tape. Hey Ed and Brandon, do you think that over time, despite current volatility, cannabis could become a safe place to park your money if there's a recession? Please won't stop, um, people won't stop consuming cannabis. I think that's, you know, that's very true. Uh, the, the latter part's very true. Uh, just like with alcohol, you know, alcohol is recession proof. 
is what they always joke about. Sure. Because everyone will always uh, always be drinking. Is that could be the, the, the same thing for cannabis? Yeah, possibly. Sure. But um, is it going to be safe in a recession? That's so hard to say. Yeah, and I don't yeah. want to give people the, 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 the wrong it, it, uh, it, it, opinions. In tough right? times, I think people that invest will look at look at fundamentals a lot closer. In other words, yeah. you know, when we get it, we, we, you know, the beginning, lo lots of, lots of uh, uh, valuation issues, right? So, so things go from virtually nothing to billions of dollars. And, and, and after time, yeah, it might be a great place, but at what level? Yeah. That's, that's the, that's going to be the, because if, if, if things can f fluctuate from 10 times revenue to th three times revenue, that, that's a big swing, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it's great to park your money in something that can, can stay relatively static. Yeah. And, and here's the thing too, right? Uh, so many of my friends and family, when, when I was first starting investing in cannabis, I kept telling them, you got like Aurora at two bucks. I was screaming at them. It was a huge buy. You got Canopy yeah. at two bucks. Screaming it was a huge buy. But if they were uh, they weren't listening to me and they were talking to them, then all of a sudden they bought Aurora at fourteen dollars, and then they come back to me and say, "Hey, you told me to get Aurora. Yeah. Well, I told you at a certain day. Yeah, Every day uh, yeah, and week we change. Price, yeah, so yeah, yeah, right. you know, uh, I I I do like that that thought process because people will still consume cannabis even in a recession. I don't know if that's relevant now because there's way too much speculation still involved. Well, that's the, and, that's and, the you, issue, and you know, right? and I and I know, you know, look, look at look at if you try to find a bottom in in uh, Bitcoin, it, it's it's you know what I mean. Like once mm -hmm. once you get that that move, it, that looks yeah. like it's never going to end. We saw it with Tilray. Tilray's ninety eight dollars. It's mm -hmm. not one hundred and ninety eight. You know that that last move up. Yeah. That 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 spike that reverses. That usually stands out for a long time. You know, you know. Look, I, I just saw, I just saw Ianthus up about. Uh, They're up a good chunk, actually. Yeah, seventy-four cents on on a, on a five-dollar number. Or yeah. like, I'm not sure exactly of the of the number. MedMen's up seventy cents here. We, we got a we got a flying day. Uh, Ivan Black's just. Uh, do we think Afria found the bottom? Well, I, I think it, it it may have if. If they can prove that a lot of these short, short like the the, the 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 research that was provided by Hindenburg, if if uh, if that's proven to be a just a story, yeah, yeah, there's a very good chance. But yeah, and and uh, they're out full force um, combating it, and and, and you know uh, I sure. believe Vic was on BNN via a phone call. Search okay. that out. Look okay. for both sides always, and then you've got um, I don't know the gentleman's name. But he was the, he's with Saul uh, Global, which right, used to be he, Scythian. He's the, he's the president? Uh, CFO? I mean, he, he could have CEO. Been. I, I was looking at a video, he was with Amanda Lang, and there's a 15 minute video of him defending everything right. that, that's occurred. So again, always look right. for both sides. Uh, has it found the bottom? You know, it's amazing what people can stomach. And I don't mean just, just to free it and just, just cannabis. It's amazing how we hear these scandals of a politician or we hear these scandals of a musician. And everyone's like, oh, their career is over. No one's going to talk. Yeah. A year later, they're, they've got concerts and they're completely full. Yeah. So, you know, you know it, it's, the, it's, it's funny how easily we forget. Well, yeah. Is that going to happen? You, you, you know, I don't know if you ever, you ever uh, followed American politics down in, in uh, Washington, D.C. The mayor of Washington, D.C., uh, they, they saw him in a, with, with a, uh, a, a, a woman of, of the evening and doing crack cocaine and this was on film and he went yeah. to jail came back and became mayor again like <laughs> the, like you're right like this you, conversation you, escalated quickly <laughs> you, you can you know the fe the phoenix rises from the ashes like yeah. it, it's mind-boggling what what you can do you know you, you go you do your time you come back out and you yeah. right back in you're you, and he became mayor of the city again uh, barry yep. was his name yeah so really mayor it barry. just depends how damning this yeah. uh, second report is it looks like they switched their focus over to yeah. liberty health sciences again always look at both sides i'm not trying to say that one is right yeah, or wrong yeah, here it, but you want to know both so you can actually make a decision don't just go with one side only you, you know there's people that probably <clears throat> found some afria stock to short yesterday and they're thinking well, well, how could this go up if I'm so, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you got, you got, you got, uh, you got hurt if you, if you went in like yesterday and yeah. shorted or this morning. No, absolutely. And it just, because the shorts are a force to reckon with. Like you can't dis discount 
the power that they have. When they when they start coming in and they start moving it, the longs jump in too. They think, hey, yeah. the, we found the bottom. <laughs> I mean, it. Yeah. I've, I've made a lot of mistakes shorting, and, and I'll tell you, 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 you better wait for things to get overbought before you start shorting. Yeah, I believe it. Anyway. Well, we're going to quickly test something right now. We're going to test your knowledge, actually, about how much do Canadian households spend on cannabis use. I'm glad you're Let's not pointing, now. pointing at me. All righty, here's your trivia question for today. How much did Canadian households spend on cannabis in 2017? Remember, only medicinal cannabis was legal. Was it A, just over five and a half billion dollars, B, just over one and a half billion dollars, or C, about half a billion dollars? We'll reveal the answer after this. And that gave us perfect amount of time to bring someone in. It's not Ed anymore. It's John Fowler, president of the Supreme Campus Company. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. So, what have you guys been up to recently? Uh, so today we were happy to announce that we've entered into uh, exclusive partnership with Khalifa Kush Enterprises. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the most exciting premium brands in the U.S. that was founded by artist Wiz Khalifa back in 2015. Yeah, and uh, it's making news all over the place. What, what exactly entails that uh, relationship with that partnership? Uh, so we met the group about a year ago, <clears throat> and it's quite interesting. We almost didn't meet them because uh, we really don't believe in the kind of endorsement deals, uh, generally, you know, slapping a brand uh, on top of someone else's product. But uh, we're encouraged to go down and meet the team. We're really impressed by the alignment of values between our company and theirs. Uh, you know, they look at quality, they respect the plant, uh, and they really feel like this is the opportunity to build leading global brands that are going to last the test of time. Yeah. Uh, for us, that was Seven Acres here in Canada. For them, that was their Kalipa Kush brand, uh, which is a really unique strain of OG Kush uh, that they've commercialized in Nevada. And they're looking forward to bringing it to California and a few other states as well. Very nice. And and how does the relationship work with uh, with Supreme, with Seven Acres? Are you hoping that, obviously, we're all waiting for that time when legalization happens uh, in the United States? It's going to happen. We just don't know when. But are you hoping to have a relationship where one of you can be crossing borders at one point in time? Uh, so this is about bringing intellectual property and expertise out of California uh, and into Canada for Supreme. Yeah. Uh, so there's going to be a strong knowledge share. There's going to be consulting around strain development, around branding, uh, around marketing. Uh, you know, he has a full uh, KKE, the company, is a full team. Uh, so it's not working with, you know, one uh, celebrity or an endorsement or anything. Obviously, he's the tastemaker. He's really driven the vision and the energy of the company. But he's got a really strong team around him. So we're going to get the benefit of their expertise. We're going to work with our genetics team to recreate Khalifa Kush for the Canadian market. And we also have included in the contract uh, a right to take that intellectual property out to the global market as well, where they're prohibited doing so starting in California. Gotcha. So, so that makes a lot of sense now going forward. Now, when it comes to uh, Seven Acres and what you've been doing with, uh, with Supreme, how has it been since, uh, since legalization? You know, as many or most viewers, I can only imagine, are well aware you guys are business to business. Uh, and, and that's the, the focus that you've, you've chosen. Uh, how has it been since October 17th? Um, so that's been our primary business model pre-recreation. So uh, with the legal market starting out, we were able to shift to a B2C model. So Seven Acres is on the shelf in six provinces. Mm -hmm. uh, we took a bit of a different approach. You know, we've always been different as a company. First, we focused on premium. So you know, for the last few years, you guys have on this show and many others talked about low cost and commoditization. We don't believe that to be true. We believe high-end cannabis flower is the most important segment in Canada and will continue to grow. We focus on producing the best cannabis in the country at scale. And we put that in our own brand, Seven Acres, out to the stores. And so far, the demand's been great. Mm -hmm. uh, to give an example, in Alberta, uh, we're the most expensive 3.5 gram SKU in the market with our flagship Jean Guy strain. It's about $10 more expensive than the next competitor. So wow. quite a big premium. Um, and we were very encouraged to see that product sold out on the online store in about 48 hours. So just showing, uh, using that one example, the strong demand that Canadians have for premium cannabis, and they're willing to pay a little bit more for something a lot better. Yeah, I remember actually uh, almost a year ago, there was an AGM meeting that I attended with you, and you were talking about uh, the Cali Bud and how uh, there's, there's a market for this high premium uh, cannabis that, that's more expensive than obviously your, your run of the mill cannabis you'll find elsewhere, but it's, it's in your eyes, in the eyes of a connoisseur, it's worth it. Uh, and one of the things we've noticed since legalization, there's a lot of talk that a lot of these LPs are not having good cannabis. Won't mention any names. 
There's a lot of talk of that right now. Do you think that uh, as this continues, people are going to get pickier with their cannabis? They're going to recognize, you know what, that it's not like a Cor uh, Coors Light or Canadian. We're like, ah, oh, just give me a beer. You get one of the two, you don't care. I, I have a funny feeling that cannabis consumer, uh, consumers are much more picky with their cannabis. Is that why, you, why you're focusing on the high brand? Yeah, so first of all, I don't think they're getting more picky. I think Canadians have had access to subjectively some of the best quality cannabis in the world for the last few decades. So mm -hmm. Canadians, you know, that's a starting point. That's where we chose to build our business, to be competitive with the illicit market. It's not a pricing issue. It's a quality issue that's going to determine if legalization wins or not. Uh, and quite frankly, you know, viewing a large panel of competitor products, you know, secret shopping, um, there's a lot of good stuff out there. There's a lot of stuff that probably toes the line between uh, comical or insulting to a consumer, depending how you look at it. And quite frankly, it's a big uh, business risk for companies that aren't able to put out what people want to buy. So to use your beer example, um, you know, people forget Budweiser, Coors Light, those are actually well-manufactured products with great brands that people love, and they're not the cheapest price point in the store. So if you go to Kincardine, where our facility is, those are premium products people buy on the weekend. There's a whole lower category of beers that people might buy during the week, and unfortunately, I think there's a risk that uh, some in the industry are in that lower quality of cannabis products. Yeah, I mean, I, I follow it a lot, and we, we're, we're constantly looking in our investors group, uh, just looking at people's reviews, because at, uh, at the end of the day, this is a new thing to a lot of people, and it's unfortunate that a lot of the camps that uh, people are getting, allegedly, of course, is, is not what they, they, they seem, to ha uh, seem to want to be getting, especially not what they were getting on the gray market as well. But uh, I have been talking to a lot of people, and they actually have had high praise for the Seven Acres Cannabis. I believe you guys just won an award on it as well. Uh, absolutely. So we were honored to win uh, Brand of the Year at the Lift & Co Awards. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a great validation. Actually, uh, I think that was the most important award out there because it's really a team effort. It's the cultivation, it's the branding, it's the sales and the marketing, the whole thing that comes together for that award. But I think, you know, not looking the other way, if you look forward, a gram of cannabis I think is roughly similar to a bottle of wine. It's a big dose for one person. It's a shareable dose for you know three, four, five uh, people, depending who you are. Mm -hmm. And if you look at right now, that bottle of wine runs about five dollars on the low end to about fifteen dollars where our flagship strains are. Well, for us, what's exciting about growing the business isn't just building new facilities to produce more cannabis. It's to produce better cannabis that we can sell at a higher price point. So you know what's on our uh, objective list is how do we get to the $20 price point, the $30 price point, and the $50 price point. And cannabis consumers listening to this are gonna laugh and say that makes no sense. But anyone who's drank a bottle of wine knows those are price points that Canadians are very comfortable with. And that's the thesis of the uh, deal we did with Khalifa Kush. They're living that and embodying that in the Nevada market today. So in a market that's usually about $15 to $20 per gram, they're selling it close to $30 per gram and gram equivalent for most of their SKUs. Okay. Well, let's switch gears a little bit here and go into the uh, the company itself. Uh, what have you been able to do over at Seven Acres when it comes to production? How much production has come online? What are the the stats right now for, uh, for what you're doing over at Supreme? Uh, absolutely. So we are one of the youngest large LPs. Uh, we got licensed only back in 2016. So we're all celebrate our third anniversary this spring. Uh, we've been very quick to bring on scale in our first facility. So Seven Acres is operating over 100,000 square feet of licensed facility, and we're producing about 12 to 13,000 kilograms per year at our run rate. But what's exciting is this is a project that uh, we're very close to the end on. We're expecting completion of all of our flowering rooms uh, by the end of the month. Uh, licensing obviously will take a little longer through the spring, but through the middle of next year, we expect to hit that full ramp of roughly 50,000 kilos per year, uh, which when you look at the price points we're achieving and the quality, I think makes that uh, one of the most attractive uh, businesses in the country. Mm -hmm. and, and just to go back a little bit on the, um, the, business, uh, the business to consumer, how you guys switched over that for, for recreation, uh, would you say, do you guys have a mixture of 50-50? Like, are you going, uh, we'll go half business to business, we'll go half business to consumer, or are we seeing a shift? Are you seeing you'd much rather be in the stores opposed to selling uh, wholesale to different LPs? Uh, for us, it's a shift over time, uh, but really it, it's the same business. So if you look at, our goal was to create a compelling retail brand and not be the retailer. Mm -hmm. So when we made a list of all the great brands that Canada's produced over the last three decades, uh, there's a lot of great companies there. When you look at a list of great Canadian retailers, unfortunately, it's a much smaller list. And that really was one of our initial thesis around why we didn't want to get in the retail business. In medical, that meant B2B sales through other licensed producer partners, such as Tilray, that purchased our product and do a great job with the repackaging, uh, the medical sales and marketing and all of that. 
Uh, on the recreational side, it's about working with the provincial, public, and private retailers on the same concept. We produce a great product, we produce our brand, but we don't uh, control that final point of sale. Mm -hmm. And in the short term, what that really allows is we can focus on the quality of the product, we can focus on the brand, and then we can focus on driving that national distribution where currently our flour is available from British Columbia through to PEI. Gotcha. And when it comes to uh, your stock itself, are, are we looking at different exchanges in the U.S. or, or, or going up on TSX? What are you guys looking for right now? Um, definitely something that, that we're looking at. So a uh, big catalyst for us was completing our $100 million financing with Bank of Montreal and GMP uh, about a month and a half ago. Uh, that was the last condition we needed to pursue an uplift from the venture exchange to the TSX proper. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're excited to get that uh, underway. And then, of course, you know, we're looking at the U.S. exchanges and the increase in uh, liquidity and investor awareness we can get from that and working through the, the internal and external uh, requirements for us to get there. It's actually uh, one reason that our AGM next week we're seeking shareholder approval for a, a potential consolidation yeah. uh, to assist with the marginability of the stock and the attractiveness for institutional investors, but also to help us get there in terms of uh, the listing requirements should the management team and the board decide that's where we're going to take the company. Yeah, actually, that was a question of mine, actually, from uh, Taylor and Ian Richardson uh, from the YouTube channel just before you came on. I asked them, uh, what questions do you have? And that was one of them for the uh, seven to one split. Uh, the reason behind it, are you going to still move forward with it? When it comes to that seven to one split, if it, has, if it is voted in and, and uh, it was voted as, yes, you can do that, does that necessarily mean you're going to go seven to one? Or does that give you the ability to do something within that range? should you see that fit uh, to get on a U.S. exchange? So first of all, it was five to one. Oh, forgive me, uh, forgive me. It's okay. And it's up to five to one. So what we want now from our shareholders is the permission to pursue this and consider it moving forward, uh, specifically to meet the uh, list of requirements if we decide we want to take the company onto the U.S. exchanges. Uh, I understand a lot of the concern around uh, perhaps some fears how uh, consolidations can be used negatively, but mm -hmm. you know we're one of the fastest growing LPs. We're number six in the company country and revenue and growing quickly uh, and we're well capitalized from our last financing. So really this is a position of strength to improve the liquidity company and build more value for shareholders over time. Gotcha. And, and coming into 2019, we're almost uh, finished 2018. I can't believe how, how quickly this year's actually uh, flown by. Uh, when it comes to 2019, what is the focus of Supreme and what are you most excited about? Uh, so for me, it's it's finishing the Seven Acres project. You know, that's been a passion project for me since we started in, in 2013. So seeing that thing hum at full capacity. Uh, but in terms of catalyst, it's continuing to grow revenue. This is a consumer goods business. This is about revenue, and this is about the quality of the revenue. And for the last few years, I think this industry has focused too much on cost. You know, margin is, is the delta between cost and price. And we really focus on how we can drive price point over time. And I don't mean just ramping up prices for the same product. I mean creating higher value products that consumers are happy to buy. Because when you look at the impact uh, of a price increase versus, say, a cost decrease, generally speaking, that pricing increase is far more valuable in terms of positive impact to our bottom line. So we're really excited to continue on that. And then in terms of other projects, um, we've got our Lot 16 projects. That's the California uh, style. Again, that's looking to spend a little bit more on the operating costs grow some strains that take longer to mature, need a little bit more love and care, but where we think we can hit even higher price points. Uh, you know, for domestics, that's going to be exciting 2019 for us. And then, of course, what I'm sure every cannabis company has been talking about is all the derivative products, exactly, concentrates, yeah. vape pens, etc. And what's really exciting there is if you look at flour plus the other smokable products, so vape pens and concentrates in most mature markets, you're 70, 80 percent of the market right there. Mm -hmm. And the key to doing well in downstream products that are ingested that way is high in flour. So if you look at the best concentrates companies, the best bait pens, et cetera, the ones where they have really strong margin over time, they all start with really great flour as the input. So having that foresight to invest in seven acres and the quality of the flour there not only allows us to be a leader in that space, but is going to be our key advantage as we move into the downstream products in Canada. Yeah, it'll be very interesting when those do start happening because uh, we've been, everyone's talking about vapes and it, it's very, I was always really surprised it wasn't allowed in the, um, in Bill C-45, but at the end of the day, I understand you, maybe I was a give a little, get a little type of thing to get that through, but I can imagine that's going to be coming down the pipeline very soon. Uh, no pun intended, of course, but uh, it, it just makes sense to, yeah. to have that as a, as a product offering. I think we, we have to understand that uh, the legalization of the vaping products is happening at the same time that Canada and the United States is struggling on how to regulate e-cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, so we've seen, for example, a crackdown recently on flavoring agents. Well, that plays very well for Supreme. Uh, a lot of vape pens in the United States and, and in the gray market here are distillate, so uh, you know, cannabis THC with artificial flavors. 
uh, and that can you know be a nice product for some people. It's generally a, a low margin product because there's not a lot to protect the brand. Um, if you take those flavorings out, you need really good cannabis that's rich in terpenes and has a pleasing aroma to extract that and put that into the vape pen to make something consumers are going to want. Um, so for us, it, you know, seeing those restrictions on flavorings and anticipating we'll see the same in the vaporization regulations when we get them uh, actually really plays into our strategy and will help us be a market leader in the vape category. That's an interesting point, actually. I appreciate that. It's kind of like uh, those flavored alcohol, right? You can put any alcohol if you're throwing all this sugar and everything else into it. But if you're having it by itself, if you drink a whiskey by itself, you're going you're gonna to notice the flavor and the, the quality of the whiskey. Same goes with, uh, with flour as well. And I'm guessing the last time you bought whiskey didn't bend over and go to the bottom shelf either. Yeah, no, uh, no, I'm a Gibson's rare man. I'm a Gibson's <laughs> rare man. I, I'm, I'm a little picky with it. But uh, no, I appreciate your time very much for coming on the show. Uh, for any of those who don't know, FIRE is the ticker. Uh, your website for where they can find out more information about you. Uh, www.supreme.ca. Nice and easy. Perfect. Thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it very much. And for our viewers, we have the answer to that trivia question we asked earlier. We're going to go there now. All right, earlier we asked you, how much did Canadian households spend on cannabis in 2017? Well, the answer is A, a whopping $5,526,600,000. And that adds up to 773.4 tons of bud at a price of about $7.15 per gram. That's double what was reported in 1983. And if you're wondering, how the heck did Stats Canada know what people were buying in 2017 when only medicinal was legal? Well, the data is based on information obtained from numerous health surveys where Canadians were asked to report their use of cannabis. And that's your trivia for today. And thank you to our, uh, to Liz West for, uh, for giving us the answer to that, but also to John Fowler for coming on. I yeah. uh, appreciate it very much. Thank you to our viewers uh, for a few of those questions that came up. He actually asked, uh, answered it before I got to ask him. I was pretty much asking uh, all the, he was answering all the questions I was Interestingly asking. enough, they say the size of the marijuana uh, industry is about the same size as the wine industry. Hmm. It's about five billion. Uh, the number that I, I've heard uh, bandied about five billion, which is, yeah, five billion. So, there you go. So, yep. cannabis industry, wine industry, neck and neck. Yeah, and I think cannabis is going to. Uh, I said you know, this for it's years. Like, it's going to be massive. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> and then shot tequila if you keep, if you keep looking at the markets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we got a few minutes before we have Ben come on. All right. Uh, Ben's going to join us to talk about uh, the Hamburg ben, ben, part two. You know what, Ben was, and I, I was saying, you know what, I wouldn't touch this. I was so afraid that there was some veracity to this report. Mm -hmm. And and look at. This Afri is over seven bucks now. Yeah, it's flying. It's flying. Well, I mean, <clears throat> if, you know, maybe the short cover rally is going to take place. I think if it opens, if it gaps tomorrow, I don't want to say I'd short it, but I might short it. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I could find it to borrow. We'll spy. I think yeah. we're going to look at spy Let's take a look at spy. Let's uh, take a look at spy. Get, yeah, okay. Uh, I'll get Sir Ed, if we can get his uh, NDI up, S we're going to chart real quick. X. How is it looking? The S and P five hundred. Yeah, that that now that that's that's even that ha like that green body is even getting bigger. So the rally's mm -hmm. continuing. Fact, where are we now? We're only down ten S and P points. At one point, we were down over seven. Wow, that's actually yeah. That, that's that's uh. Well, look at we're here. We are like at the bottom oh. of that red candle. Yeah. Okay. The bot. If we can get um oh keep doing this actually because I had an NDI up here as well. Uh, Nasdaq turned green. The S&P 500 is down 11 points, yeah. and uh, the Dow is still still down 132. But so there the, has the, been yeah, an the end of day the rally. The 10 points is basically the, the difference between the bottom of the of this candle and the top of this candle. So I got to tell you, like if you if you thought the whole world was falling apart here, mm -hmm. and you decided I'm going to take a, a short position on the S&P, you're you're, you, got you're, hurt today. you're you know what you're saying right now, Shit. mommy. Where's mommy? <laughs> mommy, I made a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> it's. <laughs> no, no. The, the bears exactly have, that. Got, have been. And then they're taking the weed, and then they've got their glass of wine. <laughs> Where's the weed? Yeah. Anyway, this is this is yeah. good to see. I don't want you know nobody wants to see the end of the world, right? Yeah, and you know the what? The financial I had, world. I had a good talk with our viewers. Will know um, Steve Meisner. 
Uh, I had a little talk with him um, over the phone, and I like talking to him. He's smart. He's been around for a long time. Yeah. He understands. But we were talking, and uh, he brought up a really interesting point about window dressing. We've talked about it a couple times in the show, but when it comes to these institutions, um, one, they start getting rid of risky investments. That's why you know you see your your mining stocks, your candidate. They're getting rid of it because they want their their funds to look more attractive when they get raided, uh, and then come into January, like, look, I'm not that risky. Uh, but another aspect that he was really paying attention to this week where it comes to you want to see the stocks do well because they're doing well as a fund manager you want to be more in stocks so you can show it if they're not doing well you want to have more cash so that you can look to everyone and say hey look I'm ready for 2019 so I found that was a really interesting point if it was to keep going a little poorly then you might see a larger sell off of these fund managers going more to cash to end off the year I got, I got to tell you this this is a powerful powerful rally for uh, you know, Aurora is going by up 83 cents. Mm -hmm. Canopy growth's up three. But I mean, Afria. So Afria is up 45 and uh, almost 46 percent. I know. Now it's 46 percent. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then, and that and Who what is it? it? Who did it's that? A, look, and it was low. It was down this morning, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was I mean, look. <laughs> I'm actually laughing. You, you like know what? All these myself. guys that are short this thing that shorted off that report and didn't cover. Yeah. Guess what? They're crying for mommy too. Okay. They're the ones who put it from 30 to 45. So it just goes to show, folks. Yeah. It just just because it's a rainy day and blood in the streets doesn't mean you can't get a little bit of uh, you can't get an umbrella you, you, or get some stitches know, to stop you know the bleeding. What? You know what? And, and when when it happens this quickly, you know what? Look, like it, 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 if you're short this thing and you don't cover today, there's a possibility it could open up a dollar or two higher tomorrow. Yeah. And and gap. You know. You know. And you know this. Brandon, I, I watch it. like it's anything, crazy. anything's possible. So, yep. hey, I was long. I got stopped out, lost five hundred bucks the other day. Okay, it, it kept going lower, mm -hmm. but I was right. Yeah, <laughs> I was, my the idea was we, right. We wanted to bring that point up. That, Say that again. What did you What did you do though? You well, were, I, I went. I went. I saw. I, th I thought I saw it looking like it's moving here. Mm -hmm. So I, I know I took a shot. I bought. 1,200 shares, but I put a stop, as soon as I got my fill, I said, okay, put a stop in 23, 24 cents below. Mm -hmm. And 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 if it if it didn't get filled, I would have carried it overnight, which I would, wouldn't would have wanted to do, but I got filled and it kept going lower. I, I think I think it was around seven and change that I got, I covered. So here here it's back to to where it was. Yeah, but but just, uh, and we don't, we didn't small know it was loss, in, a small loss. And we didn't know it was gonna come back to $7. This is this is the thing, people use hindsight all the time, and yeah. I hate hindsight because hindsight's half always right, half time you're 20, wrong. 20, 20, right. And, but it's interesting that you, you put it at 750, or around that I think you said, and then about 24 cents less you put the stop loss. It was about a quarter less, yeah. Yeah, you lost some money, but it continued down to like four something. Small losses are your friend. Yeah. If you're if you're actively trading, small losses, don't, don't try to, it, they don't. They, they're never always going to be positive. You know, who do you know that always wins? Yeah, a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a mine. What's a what's a mine? Mark Twain said a mine is a hole in the ground with a liar on yeah. top. Yeah. No, but I, I like that though because I think a lot more people need to learn that. Where yeah. if you're going in investment and, and especially if you're trying to learn how to trade, it's a little bit different for investment. You wouldn't have a stop loss that, yeah, that nah, quick on an investment. No, 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 no. That's but you, were, a, that, but you were trading. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm look at a lots. Most of my things, I, I'm a. We're in a trading market. Yeah. If you're buy and hold here. I think it's wrong right now. You're, you I know do. what you're holding? You're holding your kahunas. Yeah. Uh, they are now at 48 percent of Fria. Are we going to see 50? Yeah. Are we going to see, I, I, are we see 50? Per, uh, clearly, this this other report wasn't enough. To, LHS is up 11 cents now. It was it yeah. was up two cents. Why didn't we buy 100,000 shares and then sell it here? Make 10 grand. Hindsight. Why didn't we do that? Hindsight. What's wrong with us? I know. I know. I know. We're sitting kick, here kick, giving people all this me. news. And we're no, not no. making money I, off I, the you news. Know what? Other people you know are hopefully what? making money Med off the news. Medman's up 74 cents. No, this yeah. is this is good. This is good. I feel, and, 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 and you know, it's almost like the, uh, you know, when, when the, uh, in 2008, nine, when they had the, when the, all things fell apart and it, it looked like the world was coming to an end, even the guys that were short, they said that it, it, it was so scary yeah. because, you know, Bear Stearns was disappeared and this disappeared and it looked like we looked into the abyss and we blinked. Even the guys that were short and it was written up in that book that, that, that book that, I can't remember the name of it. Big the, short? the big short. Yep. The guys even said, even though they were right, they felt like shit yep. because it was so. 
It was terrible. Like yeah. it was like the, the end of the, the end of the financial world. So being short and being right doesn't mean you're happy. No, you're just trying to take advantage of the situation. I'd rather ask see. Steve, ask Steve Carell. Yeah, he was the the guy who played him in the uh, the Big Short. Right, right. Um, yeah, they, that's to, that's exactly and what I you're know, talking about. You know, yeah. I feel like like I've I've been, I've been shorting a few things, but you know what? I don't like to talk about it. I mm. I, I want to make a few bucks, but I would rather make money when, when everybody's making money. I feel yeah. better. Like you know, there's enough for everybody, right? Yeah, yeah. That that was a, a serious short. Hence why it was the the big short. Well, triple triple A <laughs> rated. You know, triple junk. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Oh, when you start looking into that, and that's why I'm really happy for all the people who come on this show, uh, who join groups, who are learn, who are trying to learn all this stuff. I love seeing yeah. this stuff about um, companies coming out where. They, you know, they they might have taken a, a grieve like these insane incentives, and they're making all this money on people on other people's backs. The saddest thing about the Big Short is that in the very end, one person went to jail in the United States. Yet all of that yeah. money, they all got bailouts because they're they're not only the Big Short, they're big uh, too big to fail. Yeah, I hate that term. I hate that, but yeah. anyway, all of that money. So they screwed over all these people. They all made money off of these these mortgages and everything else. And then they they put all these AAA bond stamps on all these shitty yeah, uh, yeah, things from yeah. credit card debt to to mortgage I debt know, and all that I kind know. of stuff. But then who did it pass on to after all this? Yeah. It was a bailout by the government from the Fed that gave us I money know. at interest. Anyway, I, it's, I, I, um, I it's it's a I know, shame. I, know, I, know. I think in a more educated I, world, financially educated didn't, world, this didn't would they, never have happened. Didn't they, the, they, in Iceland, I think it was Iceland, where the women put all the guys that were running the government that, that basically- They all went to jail. They all went to jail and the women took took over and said, we're gonna run it. Like, yep. which, and then I'm, this is, I'm not trying to be a gen, this is not about gender, but I'm just saying sometimes, you know, men men's egos are so, so big yeah. They can't walk through the front door, and and you know maybe they should be put in jail for allowing somebody to come in and sell them all these stupid investments. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Question of the day. Uh, question: uh, Do they think uh, the Trump tax cut in January can cause a rally in the market? Uh, I think tax uh, tax cuts almost always can cause a rally in the market. It really. But if you have a, a tax cut in the market, then all of a sudden you've got you know. These trade wars are still going off, and we, you know, if you're having negative aspects, they can easily, easily overpower a tax cut because a tax cut is supposed to like, make you feel good and all that. That's not the case, though. We are headed for a recession in the near while. Forgive me, I said the R word, but that's a part of the business cycle. Understand that, people. You have to to fight inflation. You just hope that you get a soft landing, meaning uh, you're able to come out of a recession. Just go there for a few months. You let things cool off. Let your GDP come down a little bit because if it's rising too quickly, you're getting too much inflation. Inflation is bad. You don't want inflation like that. That's why every time you go to the store, you're, you're thinking bread costs a buck, then a buck twenty-five, then a buck fifty. That's inflation. So you you do need a recession. People are so scared of it. Yeah. A recession just means that you've had two negative quarters in a row. That's not a lot, but uh, you, you know can, the difference can it between a, a, can it cause a bull run? Definitely could. It definitely could. The difference between a recession and a depression? I think one is two quarters and the other one is more. No, than no. The, the recession four, four. is when your neighbor's <laughs> out of work. A depression is when you're out of work. <laughs> that's that's the that's the one I. Uh, and it's probably true, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I just want to make sure we're, uh, we're we're all set to having Ben on here. I believe we can bring Ben on in, in just a moment. Sure. We got to line it all up because we want to talk about a couple of things. I want to I want to congratulate him for because he did say yesterday. If tomorrow they open week, we're probably you know there's enough forces in place for a. a, a, a I, however, this rally started, whether it's short covering or whatever it is. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I and uh, we're gonna have him on in about a minute or so. And I, I would be very careful to these people. You know, if you see some, like you see a lot of things rallying, watch out. You know, as, as Jonathan G says in here, this is a bull trap. Uh, is that the case? I'm not gonna say that it is necessarily, but it very well could yeah. be. Could this be a dead cat bounce? Absolutely. You've got to see a couple. I want to see a couple of these uh, these days putting uh, you know one after the other. Where I don't really like to see him run by twenty percent sometimes. No, it's not I, stupid. It, it, it's no, not no, stupid. But, but, but you're right because but it's that's too a much. Traders it's, world. That's too much. Too fast, right? Too much. Too. I would much rather see a nice steady, you know, one to two yeah, percent yeah, here there, and there, and, and just keeps it keeps leveling. This up. is just to, to snap back, and you know, if this we, we we're going to get this, we're probably going to get the in the next th two, three, four days. We'll have a day when it's down two bucks again. Yeah. 
uh, easily, easily. So, so, yeah. so just be careful out there. You're not just seeing everything and you get this FOMO, this fear of missing out, and all of a sudden you're, you're, you're slap that ask and then... <laughs> yeah, fear of and, missing uh, out. And, and all of a sudden tomorrow yeah, yeah. The, the shorts come back and everyone who was trading before you got out. Yeah. That's the bell. That's the bell. That's uh, my head. The... That's, that's what's inside my head. A, 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 a loose thing that's banging against. Do you want to look up the uh, the Midas uh, indexes real quick, and we'll go yeah. over the. Yeah, uh, let's. let's uh, just I, can, I think we got can, another minute before Ben comes on here. I, I can do that. I can do that. And if... we'll go through some stuff here. Um, well, we haven't seen a couple days in a while. I agree. Mind your wealth uh, with Nikki Domi. That's a long name, by the way. Uh, I agree. We have not seen a few days go go together. The only few days we've seen go together is red. That mm. that was a great day, though. That that S and P. Uh, down 11 points after being down 70. Boy, oh boy. That's, that's... Uh, Where did a free end at? Let's go to there really quickly. Seven and a... If I think I see it. Seven and a quarter. Free end. 51%. Congratulations to the traders out there. I hope somebody made money off of that. 51%? Well, somebody made money and a lot of people lost Woo. money. What's the, uh, what's the saying? Um... Oh, it completely eluded me when I was going to say the impatient uh, money moves from... The weak, weak hands to strong hands, or from uh, you know, fool and his, and his money soon part. Yeah, I, I don't know why it's not coming to me at, at the moment, but uh, very much on those lines. For those who are patient and who still believed in Afria and, and, and saw this as a short campaign, if you held on at seven bucks or so, well, look her now. It's, it, it's at uh, 755. Could you have guessed that was going to happen? No, you can't guess it's going to go up 51% in a day. But just understand, you know, don't be emotional. If you're, if you're buying and selling, have a purpose. You know, you know, do it, uh, do it with, uh, do it with purpose. Do it with a little bit of education. Hopefully, uh, don't panic sell and do not panic buy. Don't do it. But uh, do you have the indexes up there by chance? Yeah, uh, no, you know what? I okay, just a minute. Yeah, minus, 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 minus. And what we'll do as well, I'm going to quickly go to see what the overall indices ended up because that's an important thing. We talk a lot about a canvas here. This is what we're excited about right now because it's, it's it's so crazy going up and down. But uh, there are other things. Contrary to okay, some belief. Uh, let, let's get, uh, I, I'm just putting up the Midas Letter Canadian Cannabis Index. Perfect. Up 10.8%. That's the big boy right there. Yeah. You see that? Look at that. Holy smokes. 10%. The Midas that's Letter Small Cap, that, that's an index. That's, yeah. That's just, uh, just one second here. And just while you're pausing there, the Dow did end up down, but 0.31%. Really, really rallied there. Uh, getting close to 2,500 again. Um, S&P 500, uh, that's down 0.15%. And the NASDAQ is green, although so, I'm starting to so, realize this is so, uh, slightly delayed here. According to this, Afria, the big winner, up 45.8. This is, I'm assuming this, based on a 729 close, up 45.8%. Mm -hmm. Medman up 22%. Aurora up 13. Organogram up 13. Can trust up ten and a half. Mm -hmm. Canopy up seven. Chronos up seven. And these and these are delayed too. These are fifteen minute delayed. I don't think these. This is. Yeah, because Afria actually it? ended up. Um, Afria ended up fifty one percent according to my quote stream. Is that is that um, live? So, is that? Uh... Yeah. So they're 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 fifteen minute delayed. Uh, most the most things are on all these websites. So that's what when I was doing the uh, the down S and P five hundred. That's uh, that's delayed by fifteen minutes as well with the, the numbers I was saying. But no, fantastic closes for a lot of these. But again, I want to see this uh, go into tomorrow. Uh, for our people, uh, we've got two amazing people in our control room uh, putting into all this all the sound, all the audio, which is. The exact same thing, uh, putting together. Are we all good for uh, for Ben coming on? Sixty seconds. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Look at that. What can we do in sixty seconds? I just checked it live. It closed at seven fifty-five. Did it? Yeah, you're Very right. Nice. Fifty-one percent. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's a rally. Kind of feel stupid now, not buying it. Yeah. <laughs> You know but what? that's what it does, right? Hindsight, we keep like FOMO. Dude, we, FOMO. You know what's funny? How many times I can, you've been trading for what? More than two years. Mm. <laughs> a couple. Put a zero. Put a put a zero. <laughs> put a put, a, put a, a two zeros. Two hundred. But, but isn't it funny how you can do something like, oh, I should have bought it, and then the next time you remember the last time, like, oh, I'm gonna buy it this time, and that's the time you get burned. How many times? It's like it's like playing it, a game and you're trying to guess black black and red, and, and, and for cards, you keep going, you keep saying, no, if it's black one time, well then it has to be black. Don't let. Try to learn from the past. Don't let this hindsight get you. Don't do it, because I promise you. Uh, you're going to get burned if you think, oh, just because I missed it this time, 
the next time, oh, it's going to definitely happen. Well, that's the time you're going to lose the, a lot the, if you The other indices, the big indices were the big guys because yeah. of the, 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 the Africa. And the other indices were up 3.8, 5.9, and 4%. So, so you know what? Green across the board in, in the space. It'll be interesting to see how much follow through we have to your point. You know, we, is it this just a, a bear market rally, hmm. which can be vicious, and the shorts get, yeah. right? And then, then you know, just when everybody starts to cover, they'll follow through, and then here we go again. You know, so it's, it's, we, it's we got to be careful. We got to be careful. Yeah. Okay. So we're getting word that we're going to go straight to uh, over to Ben. Ben, ben Smith is joining, joining us. us. Uh, one of the lead writers, if not the lead writer for Maya's letter. Uh, he's been here, I believe he was here hosted with you yesterday yeah, uh, as yeah, well. We, we, he joined me for oh, two on days. on screen right now, actually. Ben, can, I got to congratulate you. Hey, guys, how you doing? You called this rally. You said if the, the everything was lined up, and look what we had, 50% rally in Africa. Yeah, the, uh, the only thing that went contrary to plan, and I wrote about, I made a couple Twitter posts on this as well, uh, it's all there on the record, is that the rally started a little bit earlier than I assumed. Um, it actually started in the morning, uh, we had that big gap down, and uh, Canvas was outperforming from the get-go, and uh, stocks were up a per, you know, fairly decent amount uh, right off the bat. So Hindenburg released that research at about one o'clock, it focused much on the Liberty Health Sciences acquisition back uh, in 2017. And uh, we saw a slight dip and then right back up and, you know, unbelievable rally in Africa. I mean, uh, that's exactly what I thought would happen. It just uh, it got that added boost after the Hindenburg report uh, after no no more shoes dropped after that report. Yeah, and it's. It's interesting. I know I was able to read through or skim through the first parts, um, but I was waiting to talk about it when you uh, when you came on the show. And it was looking like uh, there were some aspects in there again that are a little bit uh, questionable. Um, but you have to look at both sides too. I know that uh, Vic was over on BNN. Uh, he did a phone call. I haven't heard it yet. And uh, also the I think we were saying the president or the CEO of Sol Global, which is uh, used to be Scythian. Uh, he was on BNN as well with uh, Amanda Lang going over why they believe uh, they're in the right for, for these things that they're talking about. Uh, what did the report specifically go after today? I know you went into like a very Coles notes there, but diving into it, they, they went after uh, Liberty Health. What were their, their main points and, and do they have merit behind that? Well, I got through most of the report, and obviously, I didn't have time to analyze everything in depth. Um, you know, go through sources and uh, some of the things that they mentioned in the report. But uh, you know, there I think there are two sides of the coin on, on in this scenario, and one is that it appears that some insider dealings have happened, and perhaps um, things are a little bit too cozy with uh, certain insiders and officials on the Afria side. I don't think I think there's enough evidence to say, you know, with if when you take everything in totality that, you know, there is perhaps, you know, something there, uh, you know, with officials or with some dealings that may not portend to the overall uh, shareholder value in, in a lot of cases. But that being said, the research has hit everything to a large degree. So I think a lot of that is already priced in. So if you're, you know, so it's almost like two sides of the coin here. You know, Hindenburg has a point or with a lot of these things and they have to be addressed line by line. And, and I, I assume that they will be. Afria said that they will be. But also things have been hit. So, you know, you still have real companies behind this. You, you still have you know, great distribution agreements uh, with Shop Drug Mart on the Afria side. You have that Leamington greenhouse, which is best in class. So, you know, the stock has been hit, but there's still underlying assets and real businesses there. So if corporate governance is the issue and there's no other shoe to drop, then those are, you know, then the, then the asset values have already been hit and the companies are going to have to deal with that and then work on their corporate, corporate governance practices. So I think today is a reflection that people, you know, said, you know, the stock has dropped too far, too fast, and they're buying what they perceive to be value. Um, and then let the corporate governance, governance 
uh, policies sort of rearrange themselves as they may, as APRIA put out today, that they're, they're working on that. Yeah, and you know, I, I see a, a larger underlying thing here, and I, I, I agree with everything you said there, where you know, there, there are still assets uh, with the free, good assets, and, and they're still growing, and I, I still think they, this is something that they can come back from because they still have a sustainable business. But I think what people are really going to start focusing on, and this is the same um, aspect that a lot of people are starting to point, point to now, are these really, really, really cheap shares that are going out to some of these companies. I mean, look at uh, MedMen was covered uh, a little while ago about uh, structure of their uh, their financing. Uh, we've got uh, this bridge market fiasco right now where these uh, consultants are getting special consultant um, exemptions where their shares become free trading, whatever, and they're getting millions and millions and millions of shares. When you have that many shares, you can, and you have the know-how as well, you can really manipulate a company uh, to your will. I'm not saying that um, this happened with any of these companies. That's not for me to decide, but you need to look at that. And I think that people are going to take uh, notice when you're getting 242 million shares at 0 0.001 cents. I mean, I have to, we have to really make sure that that's true. You have to go back and, and look at their filings. I did not, so I'm not going to go on that allegation, but that, that's what it says in the writing. That's a lot of shares, and then to go back, and then a lot of these times they they hit the market at you know ten cents, twenty cents, a dollar, several dollars. Yeah, they're in the money, like thirty, forty thousand percent at that point. Yeah, that's an issue. You know that that that's not looking out for for shareholders. And again, uh, I don't mean to direct that specifically to Afria. I'm, I'm taking uh, taking this much more in a broader standpoint yeah. because that's what yeah. we're talking right now with with bridge market you, you these know, things. You know, to your point, a lot of people don't realize that you go from 0.001 to 0.1, that's 100 times. That 100, and at, at that low level, 100 times, you'd say, well, it only went to 10 cents. But that's 100 times your money, mm -hmm. from a tenth of a cent to, to 10 cents. It's 100 times your money. Huh. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually 1,000%, I think, 1,000 uh, times. Well, if no, it it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's 100. It's 100, from 0.001. You know, you, 10 times is 0.01, mm -hmm. 100 times is 0.1. A dollar, if it went to a dollar, then it's a thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but, the, but that's, still, that's still incredible. The point though. is, most that's people insane. can't do the math. Yeah. Apparently not me. I need a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> and and you, you get these things like, look at Huge, for instance. Huge yeah. came out at seven cents. Look at what, the, the, I, and I don't know, but I'm, I bet you somebody got paper under a penny. Mm -hmm. And here it opens at seven and goes to 90. And the and, and valuation at 90 cents was about a billion dollars. Yeah, it's a crazy. A billion dollars. It's crazy. We're, we're looking at an overarching thing here that I think investors, we spoke at uh, the beginning of the show, investors are starting to be aware of this, especially the newer investors who are intelligent people, but they're learning about the stock market. They're looking at this and it's like, wait a second, that doesn't make sense. You know, it's like as a, as a, as a kid, you know, if, if one person gets this little bite of a pie, but the other guy gets the, the rest of the pie, that kid's gonna look over the other one and say, wait a second, this isn't right. So we, we gotta be mindful again that uh, this is just written in an article. You have to see the actual um, forms that this is put on. So it's hard to, to mention right now, but I think this, is going to be something that investors talk about a while, not just for this, but for moving forward when you're going into companies. We've been preaching it for the longest time at Follow the Money. Look into their Form 9s if it's, if it's a CSC company. Look into uh, their financials. Is there cheap paper? How much went there? That tells you a lot about that investment. It could be an incredible company, but if, if the share structure is, is going to unload and all of a sudden you see a hundred million shares about to come out and they're in the money by yeah. you know multiples that's where you got to look at that like do i want to go in now or do you want to wait for that to uh, to flush out first stay tuned yeah but ben uh going on for the uh the rest of the market uh we had a crazy rally uh, and i were talking about um with the s p 500 with the dow i saw the um Oh, is it the VP of Huawei? Uh, she is the daughter of the founder of Huawei. And, and, and like, for people who don't understand the significance of this, like that's- He's, you were saying, he's that's considered the Bill Gates of China. Yeah. Like this guy is, is that company is a world-class telecom company. And, and you know, there's concern about security and, and 5G and, and all this stuff. 
I'm shocked that this happened. This is yeah. big. This is as the. How are they going to be able to do a trade agreement? Yeah. You know, or is this or is this a chip? Is this a chip in the paid table? But I, we saw that, and I, the moment that was starting to go through our different chat rooms, we're just like, oh great. We, we thought today was or yesterday was bad. Just wait for tomorrow. Yeah. But then look what happened. Yeah. S and P. It's crazy. So Ben, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, well, the official getting arrested for uh, Iranian espionage, espionage allegations was quite crazy. I think that was actually a double hit because um, uh, a headline came out yesterday, I believe, that uh, the U.S. thought that China, that China was directly responsible for the hack of uh, 500 million identities from Marriott, which is, a, of course, a huge uh, hotel conglomerate, American hotel conglomerate. Right, right. So there was sort of... Um, there's obviously some you know crazy, crazy uh, events happening between both countries, and uh, there's a lot of jockeying for position. But none of this is really surprising because as we head to the to a late cycle, late business cycle, uh, the ending of it, and the market is you know usually experiences tremendous volatility in advance of that, up to a year. I mean, just, just look at the period you know about one year periods before the housing crisis and. Up and at the tech bubble, right before the recession actually officially hit, you, we experienced tremendous volatility, and uh, you know it, investors can really expect that if indeed the business cycle is coming to an end throughout most of 2019. And uh, you know, cannabis stock investors, we've never had this environment. I've said it before, and I'll say it again: that you know conditions have been perfect pretty much from the advent of. Tweed listing in 2014, I believe it was April 12th, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And up until this time, you know, conditions, macro conditions have been perfect. But now, you know, things are changing and there's going to be, you add the market volatility with the inherent volatility of cannabis in the space, you know, it's going to make some, you know, moves like this are going to happen again this year. I guarantee you that there's going to be huge wild swings on a inch or a week basis for sure. Yeah, and actually talking to some uh, some fund managers, they were saying that you know, it's been a long time since they remember, or, or, or even they've never seen it before, the types of swings that we're seeing. I mean, massive swings. Uh, we're, we're seeing huge, huge so, mini 60 bull runs. S&P points today. For, yeah. you know, you know, like, the, so it's at one point, the, the, the NASDAQ was, or the S&P was down 3% on Tuesday, 3% today, that's 6% in two days. Yeah, it's crazy. And then, but it did come back substantially. Yeah. So there's a lot of volatility. And, and like you were saying, Ben, you know, we are heading into different economic times. And I, I do laugh at this whole notion that people are so scared of a recession. Uh, take an intro to economics class. They happen. And, and they need to happen because that's, it's kind of like um, when you see firefighters go out there and they'll, actually start mini fires to get rid of the brush so that there aren't any major fires. That major fire is a depression. So you need to have a recession to cool off the economy so that you don't go into any type of like hyperinflation or anything like that. This needs to happen. So, but we, we say the R word and everyone freaks out. So yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> how do you get around it? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, people, People are freaking out because their portfolios tend to get slammed in, a, in recessionary times and uh, it's not exactly positive on the jobs front. So there's a lot of pain with, you know, some members of the working class. So I can understand that. But, you know, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, years of malinvestment have to be corrected. Uh, you know, credit card debt, mortgage debt, everything uh, has been run up in low interest rate times. And, you know, when that normalizes, it catches a lot of people off guard. So. You know, um, there's a whole generation of millennials, for example, and younger investors who, you know, stash money into well simple accounts and passive in, in passive investing uh, mechanisms that have never really experienced a recession. So uh, you have that crowd who doesn't know how to deal with it. it it's just uh, an interesting phenomenon all around because a normalcy bias has always been to the upside. And once that gets broken, um, you know, people are buying dips and get more offside. And, uh, you know, unless you've been through that before, it, it can be a real trying experience. 
Yeah, I think it really comes down to as well as what you were saying, like our our um, debt to income ratio is the highest it's ever been you know, in Canada and probably in North America, most positive is in the States as well. But people have to understand to live in their means. We're, we're in this whole uh, society now, we want instant gratification. We want to spend on our credit cards. We take on second mortgages, third mortgages. Uh, we're investing everything in speculative stocks, not being able to lose it. And what happens when things start correcting and interest rates start going, like normalizing a little bit more? That's when people have to sell securities opposed to want to sell securities. There's a big difference. Yeah. I think that's really fueling these swings is where people are like, I can't lose it anymore. I can't do this. You, you overextended yourself. And, and that's not to say, oh, just forget about these people. You, you know, you got to educate yourself. Be smart with your money. Be smart. You know, the, the, a lot of people will, will own a stock. It keeps going up and they'll say, I'm not selling. They're not selling. Then the stock rolls over and starts to dive. And just the sheer price depreciation will force you to sell. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you'll do things. The market will make you do things you think you can't do. Anyway. Yep. Absolutely. Well, Sir Ben, we are all out of time. Uh, we are going to move on to another, uh, another little short video here, actually. But I appreciate you coming on the show, uh, going over a little bit more of the Hindenburg uh, report. But that just came out, so we'll all take a little bit of time uh, to be able to really digest that and figure out what we're supposed to be <laughs> you know, taking from that. So we'll all have the night to, to look into that. Maybe we'll talk again uh, tomorrow to see what we can do from this. So I appreciate you coming on the show, my man. All right, thanks for having me on, guys. See you, Ben. See you soon. Absolutely. So, some people are saying that it's a lot harder to get cannabis now that it's legal. Also, the product is different. So, we went to uh, the corner and we figured out, is that true? So, on October 17th, the Ontario Cannabis Store opened its invisible doors. So, now, almost two months later, I'm going to be hitting the streets of Toronto to find out what people think of it. Let's go. Have you tried the online uh, OCS, Ontario Cannabis Service? Yeah, I have checked out the site. I've looked over at some stuff. Uh, I have some friends who have ordered some things and I've tried some of that. It's been quite good. I know that it's um, a little bit of an inaccessibility issue for a lot of folks who may not be used to an online system or they just have a preference over their personal shops or however they were sourcing marijuana prior. I think it's a little bit harder to get marijuana. Um, it's less accessible now that there's only one place that you can go to buy it which is online and then you also have the delay of waiting for the delivery. I know a number of people that are still going to their local dealer because there's just no point in going with the government system as it stands. So uh, yeah I think that's going to continue but as time goes on it'll get better and better. I don't know if it's fully uh, adopted by people who do smoke it but it's getting there but I think it's new to everyone so it's still a gray area. What is the quality like um, in comparison to when you were purchasing uh, cannabis through sort of a, a legal means? Uh, it's it's quite good. It's very, it's scaled quite well. It's good cannabis. I, I don't really know what to say about it. It's, it's just nice. By it being regulated, you have a less chance of things being laced. Uh, you're probably buying more of what you actually are purchasing. Regulating it would hopefully uh, create a bit of a standard. I mean, I'm not sure how standardized things were before, you know? So uh, hopefully now uh, folks can get pot and marijuana that is safer. So actually in the past couple months, I've only relied on um, sort of what, my, what I've had from before. Um, so I haven't ordered yet online, but I know some people who have and I haven't heard any complaints about the service. So I'm sure it'll be convenient once I try to use it. So, overall, a bit of a mixed bag. Some people having issues with convenience a little bit, um, but in general, I think it's been well received and things are rapidly changing. So we'll make sure to update you when that happens. Um, for Midas Letter, I'm Connor Shaw. Very nice. And we actually have Connor Shaw right beside me, back from the corner. Hey, Connor. And, and hey. It's an interesting, t uh, interesting question. Uh, is it harder to get cannabis now and what's the quality? Yeah, I think it is interesting. Um, obviously, at the moment, you can only purchase online. 
and that's not super convenient for most people. Um, so I think a lot of people are still either using the channels they were using before legalization um, to, to access cannabis at the moment. But like I say, when it changes in the spring, I think it's going to be a lot more convenient for people. Yeah, so. absolutely. And did, did a lot of them give you a little bit of a gist of, do they like the, the quality? Was it worse? Was it better? Yeah, because a lot of people haven't really ordered it offline uh, off the Ontario Cannabis Store at the moment. Um, people in general, I, their friends might have done, so they might have a bit of an idea or have heard something about the quality, but they don't know necessarily a lot about it currently. Um, and I think with time when people start using that channel a lot more, people will be more aware of the kind of quality. But the, to be honest, there isn't that much knowledge on the street at the moment of uh, what kind of quality they're getting. Mm -hmm. do, do you know if all the uh, uh, dispensaries are shut down now or, or? I believe that from what I understand talking to people on the street that some are still operating um, although that is illegal um, but there are some that are still operating but I do know that a lot have been closed down. Um, I think this would be a good time if you wanted to uh, sort of shirk the law or uh, get around the law if you had a dispensary on wheels. Yeah. <laughs> just keep parking it. Like for instance, hey. It's an option. Like it's like, uh, you know, these trucks that come by and sell french fries, right? All you, hey, we're selling uh, yeah. marijuana fries. And they, it, cops come and you just move the thing down over here, <laughs> move around the corner. Do hey, the Pineapple Express, the OG rrr, Kush. The... I'm driving the bus. Who's that? Is that Ed driving the bus? Yeah. Ed the head. Yeah. Are you anyway. secretly telling us that you actually have one of those operations already going yeah. and this is the type of I'm like saying the if anybody wink, wants wink, pot, nudge, I can nudge. get you the pot. Hey, you want pot? <laughs> I got pot. Well, I'm nowhere to go to now, so that's good. It's <laughs> anyway. a relief. <laughs> we don't want to. Just kidding. Yeah. Just saying. Just kidding. Well, one comment on there I really liked actually was the whole aspect of the one guy said, uh, at least this way we know that the product doesn't have any like, contaminants in it. And that's actually a very interesting point because you know, as a as a teenager, of course, I didn't smoke cannabis as a teenager, never. Yeah. But I remember if I was going to smoke cannabis as a teenager, I remember sometimes it would light blue. It's not yeah. normal. And, you know, they spray it, they whatever, they don't care. You're not gonna get through with Health Canada. Uh, that's one thing our government has done well, is ensuring the cannabis is at least, uh, right. meets, the, meets those standards. Is it good cannabis compared to the street growers? That's another story. And, and there has been some of the, uh, uh, it, Companies having problems with mold and and we you know we're still right like and they're yeah. being I think a lot of that's teething problems but I think with the new regulation and the government having a hand in that uh, being able to set a standard of what the kind of quality should be I think that's only going to be good for consumers you know instead of buying it off someone you have no idea where it's actually come from or anything like that so uh, one more question for you mm -hmm. uh, what day is it today it's December sixth it's Thursday. Thursday. Is there anything else special about December 6th, Thursday? It's my birthday. It's also James's birthday. Who's Happy birthday. Oh, this is too sweet. Are you going to sing it? Ed, are you going to sing it? Happy birthday. <laughs> are you going to do the Mr. whole thing? Mr. President. <laughs> nice. No, we all want to say happy birthday. Oh, well, thank uh, not you. Not just James gets cupcakes. And this time you actually have to Is it, it my birthday too? No, it's not your birthday. I will is share the birthday? cupcake though. Is it your birthday? It is my birthday. So, I mean, Congratulations, you can have some of the cupcake though. You I know what? Yeah. That. You'll never be younger. Yeah. yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> How incredibly terrifying. You're getting older and you will you know, die soon. <laughs> <laughs> so I woke up reminded, this, by I, the You way. know what? I woke up this morning and I realized I've never been this old. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway. Connor, someone's asking, who's the Brit? Well, the Brit is Connor, and he does all of our Connor, Mark, Frazier, Alex, Alex, Suzanne, they do all a lot of the work that you don't see. What, what's uh, Ricky, your she, you, know, you do see her as well. They do a lot of the work on the cameras, yeah. on the audio, yeah. making sure everything goes you're, smooth. You're, you're good That's on the street, by on the way. show. You oh, are. well, thank you. I appreciate that. No, no, you have That's a, the first time I've ever done that. So you, this no, is no, a, but you, it's a, you're natural. Well, you know, hey, you try. You sh they should have put you in that movie with Robert Redford, The Natural. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, well, yeah. shall we... Uh, End the show for today. It's yeah. 429 in about 20 seconds. Blowing the candle out. You missed it on the camera. Oh, I should have done that. Uh, happy birthday there. to everyone. Thank you for tuning in. For everyone who came yeah. on the show today, I appreciate it very much. We always love these CEOs, presidents, growers coming to the show and being able to answer some of the questions from our from our viewers. So yeah. uh, for all that, uh, thank you for watching at MyStutter.com and on our YouTube channel as well. We'll see you again tomorrow.